Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. Good to see you. Happy Tuesday. Crawling along the week like a... I wonder if I'm live. <laughs> so, if you are there, I am wondering if I am still live. I might be. I suppose I might be. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and see if I actually am losing the connection. All right. Got you back. Okay. Holy mackerel. Well, you know what just happened. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. Moving through the week like a sloth. You know what just happened. Um, the computer wasn't plugged in. So now that one is definitely in my wheelhouse of things I can fix. I just plugged it in. Um, interesting. Thank you. I am so sorry about that. What is what is wrong with me? Carol, good to see you. Good morning. It is cold. It's cold here in Connecticut. It's terribly cold. The heat is broken in this building. I was thinking maybe the electricity is too. That's when the computer died. I thought, wait a minute, it's plugged in. But I had a pair, I remember, I, I had I forgotten I had tripped on the cord and it pulled out of the physical computer. Um, so things are falling apart quickly, but it's going to be a good day. It is a good day so far. I am glad you're there. Kirsten, good morning. Cold and sunny in Vermont. Oh, mom, good morning. She's visiting with her wonderful buddies. We love to be online. I was thinking about that when I was driving in this morning. You know, it's been a it's been a very tough time for me. I am not um, always super steady. And, you know, one of the things that has kept me, I was going to say as grounded and, and normal as I am, is being able to come here and do this and be live together like this. It's so, you know, it's been such crazy times in general. I know a lot of people are feeling depressed with winter coming and everything. But having said that, it's, you know, I posted this Mary Engelbright thing. If you're a friend with me on Facebook, I posted it this morning. It said something like, for the things you don't like, try to change them. For the things that you can't change, you have to come to peace with them and make them like work in your life. And I thought that is so true, but you also have to parallel to that really have things in your life that are making life happy and normal. Like being, you know, coming coming to the computer and seeing this thread and knowing that you're all there and that we can chat like this keeps, for me, keeps things normal and happy and really sets the tone of the rest of the day. So it is so nice to think about those things and appreciate those things that you can control, that are yours, that aren't going to go away. Um, and something like this is so nice. I feel like something really good came out of the, that horrible year 2020. Oh, Linda, good to see you. Robin, good to see you. A bit crisp and refreshing. That's one word for it. Crystal, great to see you. The day after the storm, how did it go? Are the gnomes um, still present in the yard? Nary a leaf was disturbed. Well, you know, it's storm in a teacup. That happens a lot lately. You get this terrible Wizard of Oz uh, forecast, and then all of a sudden, yeah, storm in a teacup. It's good though, isn't it? It's it's okay to be wound up and worried like that when nothing comes of it. It's like the best outcome possible. And I suppose it's good to be forewarned just in case the house did come up off the foundation and started spinning toward Oz, you know, just in case. Stranger things have happened, right? Martha, good to see you. Happy Tuesday. Doreen, happy Tuesday. Thumbs up, please. Yes, I love having those thumbs up. More and more people are finding us. You know, so many people are finding us on the Facebook group. More and more people finding us here. It's fantastic, isn't it? And I'm about to, right on the precipice of branching out into lots of different kinds of rug making. If you saw my post in our Facebook group, which is Rug Cooking and Punch Needle Club, last night I had Joss working on a Prati project. And I'll tell you more about that um, soon. We're working on a Prati project that is my secret exchange gift for my exchange person, I got Heather's name, and she's a buddy of mine anyway in, in real life. Um, I got her name, so I don't want to show too much of it, but as soon as I mail that to her and she gets it or I drive it over, then I can show you that project, and I'm going to evolve that project a little bit too. Um, so if you caught a glimpse of that, you could see, so, sorry to be so cryptic and mysterious, but the Prati picture that I'm working, I'm, I'm just going to show you the back of it, right? This is how, how easily I am um, talk myself into something. I'm just going to show you the back. And for those of you who are asking on the thread, what is Prati? 
Um, Prati is Prati is a different form of rug making. It's an even earlier form of rug making. You get a very pixelated, shaggy look, and you're um, typically pulling through, for example, in my case, these tiny little rectangles that I've got, little cut up rectangles that I've got. Um, you're typically pushing it through the back of your backing, right? This is the back. I don't want to show you the front until Heather sees it. It's going to be a lot more than this. But you're pushing it through the back. You're working in reverse. Unless you have the spring, um, the thing that looks like pliers, it's a spring proddy tool. Then you're working right side up like you're rug hooking and you're pulling things through from below as if you're pulling up loops. But with the older form of proddy where you're using a tool like this, you're pushing stuff through. And on the other side, and again, I'll reveal it in the future, um, it's very pixelated, very exciting. There's a lot going on. So I've been working on that. Joss was working on that a little bit. She did She did much of this last night. It takes no time at all. Lots of fun. I'm going to be um, stocking these in the near future too because lots of different kinds of rug making I've been working on lately for the book project. Um, and I've been enjoying immensely. And I didn't think that I could enjoy anything as much as hooking. And I don't. But it's so nice sometimes to mix it up and do something different. So um, I've really been, in, I, I forced myself along the lines of what I was just saying to enjoy doing some different things because you have to change the way that your brain's thinking, particularly when you're like turning into a train wreck. Um, you really have to control your thoughts and shape them in a way that number one, they have a shape and they're contained. And number two, that there's a positive spin on things. So I've been put, putting a lot of energy and time into these other rug projects, coming up with some really great ideas and some great original patterns that I'm right on the edge of being able to show and tell a lot more. So I'm, I'm excited because I'm dying. You can, you can tell I'm dying to share, dying to share. So more on that soon. Chrissy, good to see you. Happy coffee club time. Uh, let me just make sure I know who's here. I'm checking what you're all writing. Courtney, great to see you. Thank you. That was incredible. I can't believe I came back so easily. Sue's great to see you. Hello and happy Thanksgiving to you too. Oh, all my buddies are here. Joy, good to see you. Barbara, great to see you. Oh, finally, it's warmed up. It's going to be 40 today. Yeah, it's that's nice and that's nice and stable, isn't it? It's not freezing. You're it's comfortable enough. You probably have something nice on, a little layer of some sort, little jacket comfortable right that sounds fine and Karen great to see you gorgeous day good afternoon yep it's all coming together it's all coming together um, it's all coming together for me too particularly in my head because um, it, things have been so busy as you know things have been so busy and you know it's been that weird and thank you because you bring the busyness I've got a lot of business things are growing it's great um, but along you know working on more than one project at once and then the stuff with the kids and both kids are homesick again tonight Jossie was pukey overnight uh, Teddy was just he seemed like he was turning into a big snotty mess again so I actually drove him to school went around the cul-de-sac to drop, drop him off and I saw him with the Kleenex box like this and I thought oh forget it you know I don't want to make anybody not, not bad right it's just a cold um, I knew Jossie was sick and whatever so I thought this is it, it, people get colds even in these times right so everything with the kids and everything has been very um, trying, we'll say trying. And um, it's been hard. And I was looking for somebody locally to me here that could help me put orders out. Because even though I'm going in a lot of different directions at this moment, still getting orders and I need orders and I love to get orders. And I needed some help uh, from somebody uh, with the order part. So I went over last night, I kind of put word out in my immediate neighborhood, which is mostly like Yale families outside New Haven, Connecticut. And, um, and a bunch of people wrote back that they'd be interested in helping like part time with doing the kind of stuff that I do to get orders out, cutting up wool, spinning yarn, help, helping me transfer patterns, that kind of thing. And um, this one girl wrote, Erin, um, and she sounded so nice and she has so much experience with um, like knitting and sewing and went to art school. She went to art to school for art and she went to school for theology. And now she teaches religion at a uh, high school a few towns over and she's dying to do creative stuff again. So I met with her last night and what, and she has a very small child who was already in bed, a little girl I think. Um, so she must be a bit younger than me, but she was so nice. It was a great experience. So I'm gonna, Right after I leave here, I'm going to drop a bunch of patterns that need to get done so I can get them out in the mail and send them to the people who ordered them. 
and uh, I'm going to get her going with that. And that will be so nice. She's very excited to get going and to work on something. So um, I'll introduce her more in the future, particularly if she starts coming in here once in a while to help. So you know that there's somebody here with me who's also working, and she's part of the group, too. Kirsten does a ton of work, too, from Vermont. I, didn't, I, needed, I really needed to know that somebody local could actually do work, you know, overnight or the next day, and I could drop it on the doorstep and then pick it up without, you know, even saying hello, just coming and going like it's a drive through So it looks like a very promising thing, and I'm excited about that because if I can get her going with that, I can work on other things like the book project, like living, breathing, eating, using the bathroom, but also possibly getting back into designing and doing things that I really miss that give you new things to think about, to work on, um, new kits, new projects, new patterns coming out. I need to get back to that, and I really needed that time. So we'll see how that happens. Hopefully it works out well. Um, it, other exciting things happened. I got a little package in the mail yesterday uh, with my exchange rug, right? We do these exchange rugs in our Facebook group if you're on Facebook. Uh, the current one is ending on November 1st. I'm not sure if Jean, does anybody know if Jean put out the number three, like the third round of exchanges, or maybe she's waiting until after the holidays. Um, I'd be curious because I've done two so far. This is my second one I'm working on, but I received my second one yesterday, and it was a great thing to receive. So this came from um, uh, Joanne in Vermont. Um, I think it's Dummersville. Yeah, Dummers, uh, Dummerston, Vermont. And she wrote, Deanna, I hope you enjoy your punch. She punched this. She says that she enjoyed making it for me. And here it is with making these kind of mug rugs for each other. And we pick each other's names like a secret Santa. And Joanne, I absolutely love this. You did a beautiful job with the punch. It is super, super charming. I love it. It's cheerful. It's charming. It's colorful. And I absolutely love it. So all of us who did this exchange, we get to... Um, no, I haven't seen it yet either, Mom. I haven't seen the third round yet. I'm sure it's a coming around the, the corner. But uh, maybe, maybe Jean's just holding a little bit. I really love this. I treasure it. I really treasure it, Joanne, if you're watching. I was so happy to receive that. And I better finish mine, right? I'm in big trouble. Uh, you know what else I received yesterday? I think Kaz is probably teaching because she's a school teacher. But she gave me the word that she was sending this. And here it is. Oh, I didn't even open her card yet. I'll have to look later. Because she always writes such a nice card. I get such nice mail. Um, I just have to look at the picture because that's the kind of pig I am. Oh, how cute is that? And I'll read it later. She often puts in, yes, yeah, she wrote something. She wrote something nice and long. Little birds on the card. So I'll read that afterward. She sent over her Van Gogh rug. Ooh, interesting. That looks like some kind of a clue. Let's see what we can find out. Oh, she sent me some treasures too. Wall Street Journal. All right, Kaz. Kaz, you are the best. I just love you. Let me see. I saw this on the Facebook group. But oh, wow. All right. You ready? Are you sitting down? This is unbelievable. All these Van Gogh pieces are just incredible. And I know one other person is sending one now. Um, and I know there's a couple more in the pipeline. So I'm starting to get a feel of how many there are physically that are coming to me. Because that really, like I've said before, affects where I can display them. Right. I want to do something early in 2022, but it, I really need to have a feel for how many people are sending me Van Gogh pieces to put up into an exhibit and then send back to you. And I will send them back to you at my expense. I don't want anybody worrying about um, all that shipping because it's such a fun thing to be able to do this together. This is Kaz's piece based on the Van Gogh chair. She's got the chair there. She's got a laundry going. Look at the sky. Look at the sheep sitting over by the laundry line and all the pieces she put in. I think that goes like that. So now this is why she gave me the extra ones in case they unclipped themselves. I'll have to tuck this down just the way she had it in her photo on Facebook. Isn't that insanely charming? She is Robin. She is so sweet. This is a very wooly one, isn't it? That's like the carding thing. They're doing some carding over there. And then there's like a like a basket of, of wool and the little sleeping sheep and all that beautiful yarn on the line. Oh, look, at she did the border in velvet, right? That's got to be Diane's velvet from the um, velvet hook, Diane Collins. Isn't that beautiful? 
she did an amazing job and she put her info on the back she said inspired by starry night van gogh the chair challenge isn't that gorgeous you know van gogh knew that yellow and blue together are uh harmony perfect harmony but also these shades of brown the warm shades of brown and a bit of gray like the blue gray that really plays off the blues in the sky really smart choices happening here i like kaz i liked how you i know you're gonna watch later outlined the chair and popped the laundry posts with the dark line in the and the sheep in the basket i like all that patterning i think it looks really really smart oh and i just noticed there's two there's Oh, there's, is there more than two? Oh my gosh, it goes multicolored here. When it changes to velvet, the border, right? It goes a bit multi. I don't know if you can see, but it goes toward greens, right? Really pretty, super pretty. So I'll take photos of that and the other ones that I have that I think I forgot to post in the Facebook group. But I'll, you know, I'll also have to do a blog because I know not everybody's on Facebook. So I'm also gonna have to do a blog on ribbon candy hooking so you're able to see everybody's pieces close up. And yes, you have time if you wanna do something, if you wanna do the chair challenge, um, that's available as a PDF on the ribbon candy hooking site on the original Van Gogh blog, which should be right there with the blogs because I haven't done that many. Um, and also in the Facebook group, it's available there. If you search Van Gogh chair, it'll pop up as a PDF. So you can use the, the drawing that I did of the chair as your basis if you want. But anything Van Gogh that you would like to send to put into this exhibit um, will, will be fantastic. Just let me know you're doing it. Because if I get a, a lot more, um, I might be looking for a, a larger place. I'm going to have to take a nice photo of that because it's very hard to see how good those colors are uh, on this monitor, you know. What a perfect choice for the border. It is so pretty. Yeah, nice compliments from everybody. I'm sure Kaz will look uh, later and be super proud because she did such a nice job. Oh God, I have to put these in there with them too, the little clothespins. How clever. She's so smart. She's always thinking of, uh, she, she never backs down from a challenge. And I love that. She's done some really tough pieces early on. Uh, the half doll with like the the half doll that I did with the ca the candy wrapper skirt, like all these very non-traditional um, uh, aspects. That's what we're talking about in today's episode too. But it's so fun to challenge yourself with things like that. Yeah, Joy, it is just beautiful. And the sky is beautiful. Fantastic, delicious colors. Just really, really nice. So two beautiful pieces today. Well, they both came yesterday, but two absolutely beautiful pieces. So before I forget... Um, I want to look at our book again, but the swatch set time, this month's swatch set, today I'm going to share the recipe that inspired this particular color. This is tropical salad green, right? And the monitor's weird today because it's sunnier than this. This looks so washed out. It's kind of like, um, well, a tropical green, kind of like a yellowy green, you know? Um, so the recipe that inspired that particular color of the swatch from this month's swatch set came from it came from florida joy it came from cedar key uh highway us 19 um, 24 cedar key florida it came from the island hotel Ooh, i mean that sounds so tropical and exciting doesn't it uh, island hotel owned by mr and mrs loyal loyal first name c gibbs this hotel dates back to Civil War days. Overnight accommodations, vacation facilities. Let me show you a picture. I wonder if this is still here, the Island Hotel in Cedar Key, Florida. But this recipe here for their, their famous tropical salad and dressing is what inspired, inspired that particular color. So cut four cups of palm or lettuce hearts, one cup of pineapple cubed, quarter cup of dates chopped, quarter cup of candied or preserved ginger chopped. Ooh, smart. This is because this is an early 1950s book. You don't see a lot of references to chopped ginger. The dressing is four tablespoons of vanilla ice cream, two tablespoons each of mayo and crunchy peanut butter, and pineapple juice. Um, so you mix the ice cream, mayonnaise, and peanut butter thoroughly, thin with either pineapple or ginger juice. No, I've never heard of ginger juice, but maybe it's out there. Pour over your salad and serve. Now that is a crazy recipe. That is actually super exciting with the with the hearts of palm or lettuce hearts, cucumber, and then basically using the um, vanilla ice cream as the base of the dressing. 
unexpected, isn't it? You know, that is interesting. That is interesting. That would be a nice, fresh little salad. I'm pulling from this book still, The Ford Treasury of Favorite Recipes from Famous Eating Houses all over the U.S. and Canada. We haven't done any of the Canada ones yet, but we will soon, I'm sure. Um, bon Appetit, working toward Thanksgiving. Now, let's return to this book, which is just phenomenal, Ragra Creations by Lynn Stein. Um, I don't know what the status is. I haven't checked today um, as to like the availability of this book right now. I know there are some copies on the internet, and I hope that if you are in love with it, that you are finding your copy. Um, if not, we will all keep our eyes peeled and, um, and try to make sure that everybody who's looking hopefully sooner rather than later finds a copy because it is a beautiful book that talks about, we left off yesterday talking about the many techniques that are um, mentioned in this book, not really illustrated in terms of doing, but described. Um, so it gives you a bit of a window into lots of different things. For example, fleece and yarn sculpting, chain hooking, locker hooking, some of these techniques that are associated with rag rugs, of course, that maybe you haven't tried yet and would be interesting and fun to try. Uh, these are not challenging techniques. These are all simple techniques. It's like, you know, um, it's easy to get deer in the headlights when you haven't tried something. But when you look at an example of it and read a little bit about it, you realize these are all very easy techniques that I know that you could do. Oh, that reminds me, I think I put up the dye class if you're interested with the four palette options. If you are interested in dyeing silk stockings, it's a, it's going to be a pre-recorded dye class that's available the first week of December because I'm going to record it this weekend. Um, you get 10 um, white stockings. Uh, I think it's 10 dye colors according to the palette that you choose. The Christmas wrapping paper, the Winter Wonderland, uh, the New Year's Gala, and um, I forget what the fourth one is. Oh, um, Country Squire kind of sort of traditional colors, the maroons, the sage greens, the navies. Um, but in any case, it's a nice opportunity for, a, you know, under $100 is what, I think it's 75 to get all of these supplies, the synthropol, the citric acid, the 10 stockings, the 10 colors, um, the gloves, the twine, and then I'll do a re recorded video that you can watch and stop and start over and over to do like, I think I'm doing six or seven diff completely different techniques in it, but using stockings, using nylons, Grenfell style hooking, right? Hooking with nylons, super interesting. This is something that not everybody's heard of, particularly beginners, but hooking with stockings is a traditional, because we're, we're talking now about non-traditional materials. Stockings, nylons are a traditional material because they hook great and they hook fast. And they make beautiful, big, fat, floppity loops, you know, big, round, full loops. Um, so what a fun thing to try. So be looking for that. And also, reminder, bingo night on Friday, food theme. So day after Thanksgiving, I won't run a show this Thanksgiving, I don't think. I ran the Norman, the rug, the hooked rugs in Norman Rockwell paintings last Thanksgiving. If I think of something great, I might log on in the morning. I'll let you know if I do. I'll let you know tomorrow because I'll run a show tomorrow. But Friday is bingo night, rug hooking bingo. So make sure you go here to the description to get your card. All you need to do if you haven't played yet is print it. You can get as many cards as you want. There's 12 different cards. Uh, they're $3 each. And then as you know, like with bingo, we pool the money. We'll do a few mini games to make it even more exciting than ever. But we pool the money and divide it up uh, between the winning um, card. It, it'll be one card. So that'll be fun. Don't forget to get your bingo cards. A bunch of people got them. But make sure you get yours and that you have it or them, however many you're playing, printed in time for 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, this coming Friday. So where we left off, she was talking about embellishing. And this is one of the things she does really well. Um, she does she does a lot of over-the-top stuff, as you saw yesterday. She's, you know, putting, she's using netting. She's using a needle, too, to attach. She does, you know, needle felting onto her pieces, too. She's attaching felt balls and baubles and buttons and um, mirrors, right? This is a little mirror. So she's finding all kinds of things uh, to decorate the surface. So this isn't um, rug making in terms of, um, these aren't techniques that involve 
um, putting loops or sewing loops or any kind of pile onto your backing. These are touches that you would do like after you've got your design set and you've got some of the work underway. There's lots of kinds of baubles and interesting things that you can do to the surface, including felting directly onto the surface. Lots of things. So because this is really her forte, um, surface decoration, and non-conventional, non-traditional uh, materials, this is a large chapter for her. And she's very, very uh, clear and inspirational in the way that she talks about using different things to do hooking, prodding, braiding, all of the things that she does in this book. She shows some great examples of things I've never seen before, like this example by Ben Hall, Café uh, do Brazil, hooked without a frame. So he doesn't hook on a frame at all, Claire Murray style, right? I've been calling it that for a while because she doesn't use a frame or a hoop or anything. She just hooks on her lap. A lot of people do do that. It's a preference thing, isn't it? You do what feels right to you. You don't do what the textbook says. So Ben doesn't hook with a frame either. And he did this very unusual piece. And I like this because we've talked about this on Coffee Time. I haven't followed this idea through, but I have not forgotten. Oh, I love it too, Mom. All those magical little touches. Um, right here, he's got an original kind of coffee sack, right, that back in the day you would use as your foundation piece. Grain sack, coffee sack, feed sack, whatever. And, you know, you would pick it open. He hasn't. He's hooked right over the seam. That would be right here, I think. Maybe not. You know, maybe not. Maybe some of them are just one-sided. You know, that's true. I'm second-guessing whether there is a center seam. Doesn't matter. He's hooked, he's hooked the exact design of the sack, including the color variation, right, of the hessian uh, burlap in the colors that I guess it originally was, including the symbols and the text and everything. He's hooked all of it. It's just interesting, isn't it? It's interesting. So that if you're thinking of that project that I was talking about uh, a couple of months ago, still on. I just have to do it as soon as this book is done, but absolutely still on. Um, I love the idea of celebrating the old sacks, even though that is not our sort of go-to backing anymore. Absolutely, you can hook into an original sack, particularly if it's in good shape. You can also patch a sack and hook onto it. If what you want to do, if you want to absolutely and specifically use that sack as part of the sort of meaning um, of the piece, right, as he's done here, um, you absolutely should give it a try. I was hooking those pumpkins directly onto my potato sack. Never said that before, but, um, <laughs> oh my God, that was a weird one. Um, but in any case, you certainly can, right? I wouldn't put it down on the floor because it's, it's probably in terms of um, longevity. If it's an older sack, it's probably got one foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel at this point. So I wouldn't test it too much. I would hook it if it accepts it and then put it up on the wall and enjoy um, celebrating the history of that particular sack. We are gonna talk a lot more on that subject. now. Real departure from the old to the new. This is that construction, uh, what is it, construction fence, construction mesh. You know, when they're doing construction and they put this orange thing, at least in the U.S., you know, giant eyesore over uh, in front of where the people are um, holding brooms and um, smoking. I'm sorry, I mean working. Too much construction around here. I've gotten bitter. Um, they put it right over there in this beautiful orange mesh. Um, could be backing. It's obviously a huge gauge, uh, very, very wide open spaces, but this is an art installation, right? So maybe this isn't for you, but this is, this is an idea. Um, this is a piece of art. So this is very specifically uh, Kasia uh, Takala Mina, I gotta change my glasses. These are tough names too. Let me see, I don't wanna screw this up. Mina um, Peronin. Hannah, Lisa, Paikala, um, this, these are all, um, it sounds like Finnish names, postcard from Helsinki. So and it's knotted plastic packaging waste, plastic bags, on construction mesh. So let me show you that one more time. So this is, they're working on an installation here. This is going to be something that is not a huge departure from hooking, right? Putting, filling in these holes, using it as a mesh backing. Uh, to put something with a three-dimensional pile. It's really the exact same thing, isn't it? It just depends, you know, if this is something that you can use around your, your place. But in terms of being an idea, it's very interesting and challenging. 
Um, so she shows a lot of this kind of thing. She does a lot of these samples on the pages where she'll take a piece of hessian, right, the burlap, and she'll do things with seed beads and jewels and all of these embellishments that we're talking about. She'll do very interesting things with them. Um, so, you know, it's a fun book. She's got a big stone there or something. Okay, so she's hooked biscuit wrappers, which are cookie wrappers, um, sanded and dyed coconut shell. Okay, so this is actually a coconut shell. And she sanded it and she's dyed it blue. Um, shell beading and stitched rickrack, right, rickrack braid. So, yeah, I mean, she's, okay, the rickrack, I think, is the gold part that's around the beading here. But talk about non-traditional materials, right? She's working on a sampler with, with uh, cookie wrappers and a coconut shell. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it's in one regard far out, but in the other regard, it's just kind of taking, following the thought through what we already do to uh, its kind of its final end, right? Bring it, bringing it to extremes. Um, but before hitting that extreme, ending on something that is still quite beautiful, uh, in terms of de decorative art. So there's a lot of that in this book. I don't want to show you every page, obviously, because I know some of you want to buy it and I know you want to be surprised. So there's a lot of sort of gallery things in here that show you projects that are very non-traditional. Remember, she did the traditional part at the beginning of this book. Um, she told us the history. She showed us some very old examples of rug hooking. And then she goes a little bit further out um, and shows us things that are distinctly non-traditional. And they are a bit more challenging and also inspiring, right? Um, let me make sure I'm caught up here. Yeah, I think so. So at the end of the book, and it's not really the end of the book, I'm this, this far through the book, right? And this, the whole rest of the book is projects. So there are tons of projects in this book. I'm going to show you a few of them because they're super interesting. Different. This first one is called Allotment Veggie Markers. So, um, a markers, right? I have trouble saying that word. Allotment is like um, in the UK when you have a little public garden, like you have a garden in a public space, that's your allotment and you grow things there. So this is making um, markers to show what vegetables are growing in your little allotment garden. So um, this is what the project, let me see if there's a finished one. I think this is what the project looks like here. This little hooked, I think that's a carrot. Right? And she's got um, peas over here, right? There's the peas. And you see how she's hooking with plastic. I'll tell you exactly what she's using. Uh, plastic carrier bags, four orange ones, three dark green ones, three lime green ones. Now, you know, without sounding like I'm, I'm being sarcastic because I'm, I'm not. I often am, but I'm not. If you want to hook with non-traditional materials, and it's a hard day and age to be looking for plastic bags, but they're, they're still out there. You still occasionally see them. It, it would be a thing, wouldn't it, to be collecting, constantly collecting, and be constantly um, cognizant and thoughtful about what, what is going through your hands. Because if you hold on um, to all of these kinds of bags and stuff, you'll find that when it comes time to make an allotment veggie marker that you've got lime green bags and dark green bags, and they can be found. And wouldn't it be a great feeling to go, oh, I do have a few things that are green in my collection of bags, right? So if you know that you're interested in this style of hooking with non-traditional materials, it is a good thing to start now with collecting, not everything in the world, right? Your house will turn into a tomb, but collecting things that you think have potential in the future um, to hook with. So, so in other words, what I'm saying is these are not things that everybody has, right? But they are not unheard of things either. Uh, the carrier bags, and then she's got black woven. Now they're gonna um, they're gonna call everything by different names, aren't they? Even though it's still English, so we're gonna call this stuff. Um, they're calling it calling it uh, polypropylene horticultural plastic. It's this black stuff. What do we what do we call this in the U.S.? Does anybody know? Is that just like um, oh, some kind of a liner? Is that like what are the garden liner? What do they call that? Sue, is it sue, is that ah, sewage something, sewage paper, sewage liner, help me out. This black stuff, it does have, Home Depot has it, any hardware store has it, right? 
Um, it does have, um, it's obviously not a woven, but it does have little holes in between, which make it possible to hook into it. It's a mesh, right? It's a mesh. Landscaping cloth, maybe, maybe. I feel like landscaping something, maybe it is cloth. Um, it'd be a good place to start, right? Because you, you, get, you get what it is. You're putting it down in the dirt and it's waterproof and it like kind of creates layers. Um, but it, it's mesh and therefore you can hook into it. Um, oh, Catherine, good to see you. Made it to, Ath to Georgia, but Athens is too far from Savannah. I see. Next time, next time. I love Savannah too. What a beautiful city that is. Oh, man. Um, so, so she's using, okay, she's using that stuff. Um, garden stakes, plastic garden stakes, which are just the ones that are blanks that you put in there to attach the thing to once you finished hooking it. Uh, two small plastic storage crates. Um, I don't know that you need that. Looking at what she's doing, um, she's using markers just to draw the image onto that landscaping cloth, right? She's just drawing it on there. I'm not going to even say what kind of a marker you need because you need anything that shows up, right? That's good enough. Wax crayon in white. Anything that shows up um, is great. Scissors, tape. She uses a quilting hoop. She's actually got the thing through the hoop in the pictures, right? Even though it's this unusual mesh, uh, a rug hook. And, you know, almost universally in Britain, they will be using glue. And we typically don't do that in North America. We stay away from glue because it has the potential to eat through your materials. So we usually give a huge thumbs down to glue. It depends on where you're from, what your comfort level is. You do the research and you figure it out. You do the thing that's right for you. We are not going to judge you if you do glue or no glue or whatever. Just, it, I don't do glue and I don't recommend glue, uh, but other people do and they make beautiful pieces. So that's that, right? Um, but if you have the glue, you also need the, a latex spreader and possibly a needle to like fold it back and shape it but she walks you through using these plastic bags in this landscaping cloth background hooking it with a rug hook trimming it down with a regular pair of craft scissors uh, and then she's going to be folding the edges back gluing them down and sticking it on that stake to put into the ground she even looks like she puts a piece of paper or cloth on the back of it Right, so that you know, it doesn't say the word carrot, but you know that that's the carrot or the peas or whatever it is. She does a beautiful stocking. She does nice things like this too. Very simple um, version, sort of version of Prati, Prati looking flowers. But what she's done here is she's made a flower power garland out of a regular wire coat hanger, if you still have those. She just pulled it out of shape, right? She just pulled it down to form a circle. And guess what? You've got a hanger ready to go. What a nice idea, right? And then she's kind of stringing things that she did with Prati, right? Like we were just talking about Prati. Three-dimensional fluff and flowers onto the stretched out round coat hanger and the hanger's ready to go. You just stick it on a nail and your wreath is hanging there. Um, very nice, simple project. Very nice. And she put buttons in the centers of the flowers. So that's nice too. I like this one too. This is a pot holder. It's a rug hooked pot holder. And she did it in the shape of a fried egg, right? So just very basic hooking. She made a fried egg to use as a pot holder. Really appropriate for the kitchen. Very sunny and sweet and cheery. Really nice. So she's showing you a lot of basic techniques. You know, she does a lot of this stuff. This is very old school, and I love it. I love this stuff. Tracing around bowls, doing things like that, making it work, not going online to search for more stuff you can buy, looking around your house to see what things you have that can help you figure out how to solve little speed bumps in your project, right? Particularly when you're doing projects that are three-dimensional or shaped or different, right? Um, she's a good problem solver, Lynn Stein, a great problem solver. And she does hair accessories like this kind of thing, you know, making shapes, showing you shapes for different styles of barrette. Um, so lots of different projects at the end. This one's real pretty with a, with a um, hair comb, you know, doing something like this, big barrette. Let me see if I can get it there. Very New Year's eve right? Very glitzy and blingy. Interesting. And a big one here that is more, reminds me of like a little fascinator. It's so large. Very Alice in Wonderland, right? And I think she says Alice Band. Very Alice in Wonderland. So very beautiful in different projects at the end. A few traditional ones. Um, this is more like a 
draft stopper, I think, and she's doing it on backing that is closer to latch backing, right? So different backings, different tools. Uh, this is locker hooking. All right, so that's locker hooking. That one's a little bit different, but very feasible. This is just the one I used for the thumbnail, just the straight hook drug with the braided border. And she shows you how to do both of those things. This is her design, Marsha Ust. Um, is that design available? This is Lynn Stein's design. This is one of the projects in the book. Um, so I would ha you'd have to follow up with what she does um, to see what her status is with selling patterns and all that. But beautiful on her frame that we talked about yesterday. Looks like a tarp. You know, Robin, I wonder if it is that easy. It might be a tarp. You're absolutely right, right? I think it's a tarp. And then it would come color, too, which would be, yeah, add another dimension. Interesting. It could be a tarp. Um, I am so out of touch with the hardware store. It, it's, it's like crazy. Um, but on this particular one with the deer, a bit of a Jacobian feel to it, right? She's got some of these things that we talked about. She's, she's got going with her... This is that wire wrapping. You know, she's got a wire uh, knotted underneath, and then she lifts up the wire and winds it with different fibers, right? And she's going to lay that on top as part of the surface design. And she's got some of her felt balls and buttons and candy wrappers and cookie wrappers right on the surface of this piece, right? So it really is traditional rug hooking, but with a lot of embellishments, a lot of sort of um, daydreamy little little thoughts on the surface and then she shows you how to do the braid to put around the border which really complements that piece um, and then her cover piece that we looked at a little bit yesterday called it's a wrap this piece here I think is just extraordinary so let's look at the wow look at this side that's all plaid with the candy wrappers isn't that crazy let's look at what some of the materials are here Martha, your mom would have liked that center pa panel, huh, with all the buttons? Your mom liked better buttons, I think. But it's a wrap. Let's see. She's got a, she uses her frame, um, burlap, marker, a rug hook, scissors, a staple gun, or drawing pins, like to just attach the burlap to the frame. Um, again, latex and a spreader. Two beer bottle caps. Okay interesting I'm not oh okay so the beer bottle caps are embedded that's one here come on beer bottle cap oh oh I pulled away too soon there we go that's got to be one of the beer bottle caps oh what's going on there I didn't even see that Oh, all those little um, clippy things, all those little office, the safety pin, and then those little clippy things. Interesting. I'm not immediately seeing the other beer bottle cap. Let's find out. Well, there's two in there. Anyway, printed um, foil chocolate and biscuit wrappers, a black plastic bin liner, so garbage bag, uh, a white garbage bag, plastic mesh fruit bag. So that's a little bit different because they always have those in grocery stores there mesh fruit bags, uh, plastic bath scrubs, and she cuts those, she trims those and shapes those down, the scrubs that are just like loofahs for the bath, right, she attaches those and trims them down, assorted threads and small remnant fabric, so she's really not using fabric in this piece at all, she's using garbage bags and cookie uh, wrappers and candy wrappers to hook with, so very little fabric happening here, sequins, beads, safety pins, and then an iron, old towels, and nonstick baking parchment. You know, I wonder if she's going to put bar parchment over it and do something to it that way. You know, I can see on the back that she's using um, she's using the latex to secure the back of the candy wrappers and things like that. So, you know, I don't want to get into that right now because there is always the worry. When you say it's okay to use glue on the back of something, it's a moving target, isn't it? Because it depends on what the something is and it depends on what glue you're holding. Um, because some glues will eat away at the integrity of the piece and the materials that you've spent so long putting in, and others will not. Others have more of like this lasting heirloom quality, but how long? We don't know, right? How, they haven't been tested for that long. 
So these are all things that are worth thinking about, but I'm, I'm guessing that judging from these photos, she's really using the glue to secure very small things like candy wrappers that might want to come out. You know, when I hook with candy wrappers myself, I make sure that the tails are up on the surface so that it's looped underneath and they're not, they're not going to come out. But different places, different people, different techniques. She's got a lot going, she's got a lot going on here. You can see from this picture, this is some of her candy wrappers. Looks like crackle or something. Interesting, right? It's at least food for thought. Oh, Heather. Oh, you're catching the last bit, are you, Heather? I'm not going to say anything about that. That was super subtle, huh? Nobody say anything. Because I have you for the secret thing, right, Heather? Don't be paranoid. It's good. It's good stuff. Uh, and then she does this tea cozy that's very cool. And that's on the cover, too. The tea cozy. And if you can see, the lady with the tea cozy has just one button eye. And the other one is just a regular hook die. Very cool piece with a pom-pom hat. That's a nice winter gift, isn't it? So that's in there, too. Uh, she doesn't daisy chain necklace, a Mizzy Mazzy runner. Um, I'm going to show you the Mizzy Mazzy runner. It's so pretty, which is proddy, or as the British say, proggy. And you can see she attached either pom-poms or felt balls to the edges. Really nice. It looks old, doesn't it? It's brand new and it looks old. Um, yeah, she's using her spring, her spring uh, proddy tool. I have one of those two. I'll have to make a video and show that. She's using the spring one. So she's working from the top, but you can see all the fiber that she's putting in there, adding the balls to the side. Beautiful projects, very different. No, don't look though, don't look though, Heather, just don't look. I didn't completely reveal, but don't look because it'll give a little bit away and I'd rather you be super surprised. Shouldn't have said anything at all, right? What a ding dong. Um, and this one's so cute too. This one's on the cover too, so I feel like I should show you this spotty lovebird cushion. Um, just, you know, she's got a real style, and I, I admire that more than anything. I always appreciate good design more than anything. She's got great technique, too, but I just love it. Yeah, these unexpected, super non-traditional materials. And this is her, again, with the, like, um, what did she call it? Cutting, um, what did she call that? Shaping, sculpting wool on the surface. So she's got, like, large lumps of wool on the surface, and she's shaping them she's cutting them down you know if you do this to a great extent you can buy these things that look like men's electric razors that are for shaping your rock right you could use a razor too you could use an electric razor but they're very fine for doing like Walterboro type shaping or pure wool shaping which is different than doing tons of hooking if you're attaching like large pieces of wool and then you're shearing it or shaping it on the surface. That's definitely different than hooking densely and finely and then clipping it like Walterboro style. But there's so many different ways that you can do this, so many different ways you can experiment. This is one of the great books for showing the different ways. Really cute um, Tooth Fairy pillow too. Really cute. And that's such a useful thing too, isn't it? I wish I would have done that before. I don't know how many more teeth uh, Joss is gonna lose while remaining under the impression that the fairy, you know, was coming in through the window and, uh, but you never know, you never know. But super, do, doing all kinds of things with upholstery materials, beads, fabrics, sequins, it's really an absolute feast for the eyes. This is a great inspiration book, how-to book. Um, it's really good, showing the chain stitching here. She's doing chain stitching for the legs. That's really all you need to know. You, you can do your chain stitching with a rug hook, but it puts a chain on the surface rather than loops. Um, so that's a fun thing to do too. That's a fun thing to do, particularly when you want a lot of uh, directional pull, right? And then the last chapter, she talks about community projects. So she talks about larger scaled projects and, and, and projects that are happening, sort of rug hooking campaigns happening in other countries, like the one in Guatemala, uh, like the one in Mexico City. She talks about things like that too. And then chapter nine is just a gallery of many rugs that are all glorious. Um, so this is the one finished. Oh my gosh, wait till you see the scale of this. The one that we were looking at, postcard from Helsinki that was done on construction mesh with bags, right? With like bags, uh, plastic bags. This is it. And this is a human, right? That's not like a, like a, like a doll. 
this is a human, um, giant rug. So this is that giant construction mesh piece that they were putting together construction from Helsinki, uh, postcard from Helsinki, on a construction mesh with all those bags. Them's a lot of bags, huh? Thank you, Sharon. But interesting, right? Very, diff very different. But now you can see it in its full blast, um, what they were doing. Absolutely beautiful. This is another gorgeous piece. Julia Burroughs. It's called Diamonds from the early 1990s. It looks super 90s. Uh, spring hooked. You know, I'm thinking spring hooked is what we would call the party with the spring attached, right? You know what? Hang there for one second. Let me get that thing and show you. Because I've referenced it five times today, and I haven't showed it to you. I thought I had it in my bag. Hold on one second. I am a disastrous person. I will tell you that. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, spring hook. All right. I don't. I prefer to use the other one, but this is what the spring hook looks like. Right. So you go through like a little needle nose like this. Sorry. You go through the backing. Under your backing, you're feeding the strip like you would if you were rug hooking, and then you pull it up. Right. Whether it's shaped or not. So this is. I think. I don't know. But I'm thinking that that prodder that we would call a prodder or a proddy tool is what they're referring to as a spring hook unless you know of something else that is more like a spring hook than that um, I'm thinking that might be the same tool but this piece is amazing let me show it to you it says fascinated by old quilts and rag rugs Julia uses largely reclaimed woolen fabrics concerned with their concealed history okay that's a mouthful right but she likes to use old stuff and this is the rug she's that we're talking about it's very subtle Lots of grays. You can see how this would be a 90s rug, right? Not getting good light at all. But there's a subtle diamond in there. Really is pretty. And the subtle check. Very subtle. Real pretty, though. Lots of pinks and purples. It didn't look like that on the picture. Um, so the whole back of the book is really... Oh, I like this. Linda Ray Coughlin, Walking on Eggs hooked, stitched, stitched, and machine embroidered recycled fabrics on linen. Linda combines rag rug techniques, embroidery, and artifacts to make political and personal gender statements, which can sometimes be uncomfortable, but always powerful. And this one says, I spent way too much time wondering why you don't like me the way I am. I like that. And then it's walking on eggs. That's great, isn't it? What a cool piece. I think this is embroidery, the text. I think that's the embroidery part. That's a gorgeous piece. What a, it is a powerful piece. That is really, really nice. So gallery in the back is super interesting. Uh-oh. Lou Mason, PJB, 19, well, it's 1995. It's, the piece is called 1986. Wool on Hessian, inspired by 1950s fabrics and plates, African prints, uh, 20s and 30s, Russian painted china, done with tweeds and brightly colored fabrics. This is a beautiful piece. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful, I was looking at this one too. Oh, that's very nice, very nice. Lots of gallery pages at the back. Check this teapot out. I usually am not a huge fan of realism, but that is spectacular. Isn't that spectacular? Putting that down on a table, right? I mean, it would be super confusing because it's like a Trump Loy piece. That, tea, that teacup is just jumping right out. Got to show you this too. This is just too much. This is too much. So this artist we talked about on Friday night at cocktail time, Ali uh, Rind, sofa bed. She does all the upholstery the rug hooked upholstery. So she's got some kind of a trailer or camper and she's got this whole thing upholstered out, right? The whole couch. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, Crystal, that's something, isn't it? That's a nice combo too, using the embroidery. I know, the teacup, right? Kirsten, crazy teacup. Okay, this is by Lynn Stein, Mythological Beast, 1998, hand hooked, wrapped wire, she likes the wrapped wire, stitched, 
largely recycled fabrics, fibers, embellishments inspired by fairy tales, mythology, and pantomime. Mythical beasts. I absolutely love that. It reminds me of cave paintings, right? A little bit, but yeah, more magic, more of a fairy tale quality, more fairy tale colors. But that is just a gorgeous piece. So different. So different. So that's the thing that this book is so good for. It is showing you um, lots of different things that perhaps you haven't seen before. One more, one more. This is another Lindstein, Cabbages and Lots of Flowers. Um, gun tufted, so using the tufting gun, right? Um, needle felted, wrapped wire, stitched, largely recycled fabrics and fibers, polyester backing cloth, so probably like poly rug warp, uh, inspired by local allotments their patterns and their symmetry. This is beautiful. And it looks like she's done that thing with the shaped or sculpted wool. Those cabbages look like sculpted wool. Like it's been felted, big lumps, and then it looks like she sculpted it onto the surface. I just love that piece too. And then she talks about museum collections at the end, galleries and um, all of that. So that could be possibly a little bit dated. This book came out just as a reminder in 2014. So it's not an old book by any means. Um, interesting. There's purses and stuff in here too. And it's an excellent book and I highly recommend it. And I hope for all of you, hello Matthew, uh, the entire sofa. I know. You know, I wonder if she did that with the rug tufting gun because she's the same person, Allie, who does those giant totems that are hooked giant like taller than a person remember the uh, pointy ones let me see if I can pull it up Th these right here um, like installation pieces she does those too so fast epic pieces she's doing I'm wondering if she's doing a tufting gun um, and, and not hooking let's see if it says I'm curious mainly so the the sofa is using uh, woolen blankets that she dyed to prod, so she's doing proddy. Um, so that's not hooked. Let me see if I can get that super close up. There we go. So you can see the ends are clipped. So they have, she's either pulled up or she's pushed down from behind and pushed little rectangles of fabric through and got a big dense cushy pile and then clipped it. Good, isn't it? Lots to talk about, lots to think about, literally endless and limitless. Um, sometimes, well, mostly earlier on, I used to think, gosh, how many Coffee Time episodes could I possibly do? It's endless, isn't it? I mean, it's endless. There's endless things to think about, techniques, crossovers, people. Um, it's literally endless and it's so exciting. Hey, Denise. Oh, that's okay. We did a great episode. We were finishing up on this book and talking about all kinds of really uh, non-conventional, non-traditional ways of hooking and prodding and creating a nice piece of um, textile art, right? Whatever tool you're holding in your hand, textile art. Um, so, you know, I have really immensely enjoyed this book, uh, Rag Rug Creations by Lynn Stein. It is fantastic. I don't know what my plan is for tomorrow, but I'll be here tomorrow. I'll be on for coffee time tomorrow, same time as always. I'll figure out what we're going to do, but just remember that those bingo cards are there. Make sure, you know, if you are in the U.S. and you're celebrating Thanksgiving on Thursday, uh, the week is going to go by fast, right? It's like a, it's like a moving uh, magic carpet right now. So, um, yeah, remember that those are there and that, you know, you want to print those before Friday so we can play together. Whether you are live or not on Friday, if you have a winning card, you will, you will be notified that you won and be sent the code for the winners to get the money that you won. So you don't ha actually have to be there live, but it is fun to participate. Crystal says, so many places for crumbs to hide and play. Yeah, absolutely. That is a thing, isn't it? It's so dense. Um, but I think with Prati like that, because it's like almost like a shared top, 
um, it is a bit more open than if it were looped. If it were looped, it's very closed, isn't it? Loop after loop after loop or punched. But um, I was thinking of you. But, you know, when you've got it clipped in any way, there is the possibility. You have to think more about things, food and stains and things like that a little bit more. Still super durable, super cushy, comfortable, all those things, and really beautiful. Gives a great look, too. It's a very different look, things that are prodded as opposed to hooked or punched. So interesting things that, that we should all think about, right? Inspiration. Hey, have a great afternoon. Um, I can't think, I know I've got a hundred things to tell you and I can't think of any of them. So hopefully I have it together tomorrow. We will run a great episode tomorrow, whatever it, whatever it is it is. And I will look forward to seeing you then. Absolutely. I would love it if you came next week. Heather, I have to give you your thing. It'll be done by then. There, there's that subtlety again, huh? Um, I'll see, I'll see you tomorrow. Prati tool. Or let me know if you find anything more about this, the spring hook. Um, it's got to be this. What else could it possibly be, right? So have a great afternoon, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow at noon Eastern Standard Time. Take care.